music today? Is it good or bad? Probably just as good or bad as it ever was. Depends on how you approach it. It may not be your taste, but shoot, you should learn about it. Why? Because that's what's dictating the, the, the pace of the culture. And if you don't know anything about your audience, how can you possibly sell them anything? If you don't know anything about your students, how can you possibly teach them anything? You have to know those things, otherwise you just make this incredible divide. And there's, you know, there's, there's willful ignorance there. It's funny to me that people will complain about how willfully ignorant their students are, and yet they remain willfully ignorant of student culture. Mm. How good of a life do you want to have? How good of a job do you want to have? How good of, what, how good of a parent do you want to be? And the more you can know, you're never going to lose an opportunity in life because you know too much. The only opportunity in life that you're going to lose because you know too much is a bad opportunity. The majority only impacted the people that were there. Hmm. Well, and that's the thing is that we'll be ignorant to think that. But how did World War II impact you? Um, it impacted everybody in this room. There's nobody who, who, who left unimpacted in, in one very, very immediate way. My grandfather was in Auschwitz. That's why it's so strange that I am Hitler. But my grandfather was in Auschwitz. Uh, if he hadn't been there, his life wouldn't have gone the way that it went. I wouldn't be here right now. So you'd have, there'd be somebody else talking. But then again, you wouldn't be where you are right now either. Because little world events triggered small events in your grandparents' life or your great-grandparents' lives. That if they're off by just a few minutes, you're not here. I mean, even if you consider it in a, in, a, in a really, like, microcosmic way, you, know, you, you being born was because your parents got together at a, at a very specific exact second. If they had gotten together just five seconds in some other direction, you wouldn't be here. There might be some other version of their child who would be here, but certainly it wouldn't be you. It would be something else. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the ignorant person who just thinks like, ah, nothing really affects me. Everything affects you. Just about everything affects you. It's hard to find things that don't impact you in some way. But it's the ignorant person who kind of like, all of a sudden these ideas get too big. And it's just like, oh, it's too much thinking, or I don't want to think about it, which is fine. There's nothing that says that you have to think about it or engage ideas. But it's just interesting to me that the people who, this is why you'll find people who believe in like these really deep conspiracy theories, but they don't really do much thinking about it or research into it. You know? They'll just kind of like write things off and say, well, things are just, it's just, it's just corrupt. Yeah, you were gonna say. So even when I asked that question, what are the things that we're ignorant about? We got one answer. Some of you are ignorant about what I'm talking about right now if you're doing something that has nothing to do with the class, but most are. And then we wonder, huh, how come I have an F? Ah, oh, Scanlon's just mean. There's going to be willful ignorance. <clears throat> and then there's, of course, you know, we call it almost, uh, I don't know, accidental ignorance. In other words, some people just simply don't care. Um, the problem with the willful ignorance is that this is probably the, the, the worst type of ignorance. That's the one that's narcissistic, right? Yeah, because that's the one who says like, oh, like you know, like, like what, what do you know? Well, what you don't, you don't know what you don't know. That's the thing about it. It's like, uh, this is like, a, for example, I'll talk to students and they'll say, oh my God, I have to, I'm doing this math class. When am I ever going to need this math stuff in real life? I don't know. When are you gonna need this math stuff in real life? How can you possibly make that assessment in your life right now? You have no idea what you're going to do in life. You have no idea what direction your life is going to go in. You don't know what you don't know. I mean, it's not even just a level of, of, of ignorance, it's a level of complete, I mean, almost ineradicable stupidity to give up knowledge, to give up learning opportunities. I don't care who you are. And what are you going to, when are you ever going to need to know anything? I don't know, but that's the thing. One of two things is going to happen to you, and well, I guess one of three things will happen to you in life. Either you aren't going to need it, in which case, fine, but you had more knowledge. Does that make you somehow a less interesting person? No, it's going to pay dividends in ways that you can't possibly imagine. I mean, I come across people sometimes in life that are just so incredibly dull. And they all seem to have something in common, by the way. Very low achievers. But that makes sense. Because why would you give an opportunity to a dull person? 
a dull person is going to do jobs that they won't have to interact with people, or they're going to interact with other dull people. And those are not going to be high paying jobs. Those will not be jobs, jobs with advancement. But then again, the people who do those a lot of times are just simply ignorant. They don't realize what they don't realize. They don't know what they don't know. What could they have become? I don't know, maybe nothing. Maybe the, the dullness of their life really is the ceiling of what they possibly could have accomplished. Because they're just dull people. And there's nothing wrong with them. And some, for some reason when we say that, we get really defensive about it. I mean, like, you know, you're judging people. Hell yeah, we're judging people. And if you say that, you're judging me. We, we can't escape it. We're always judging people. There's just two types of people. The people who have the courage to admit that they are, and the people who don't have the courage because they're probably afraid of being judged themselves. You're perfectly welcome to judge me as much as you like. Of course, you don't need my permission. Most of us do it anyway. We just don't have the courage to do it outwardly. And so those are the two types of people, the people who have the courage to, to, to admit that they do it. And if you admit that you do it, then hopefully your judgment is going to go towards some positive end. In other words, you can, like, um, <clears throat> growing up, out of where I grew up in, in Los Angeles, it was funny, I noticed at one point, we had a lot of parties in my neighborhood, but shit, we had nothing to celebrate. The best that we could come up with for celebrations was the day that someone was born, which is just such a silly, silly thing to celebrate. It's like, everybody has it. Everybody has lots of them throughout their lives. And yet we make such a huge deal of, this is the day that you passed out of your mother. How about, how about replacing our birthdays with accomplishment day? Every year you have to celebrate the thing that, yeah, your greatest accomplishment for that year. And you can't say, my children are my greatest accomplishment. Because first off, that would be sad in most cases. <laughs> but, but even if it was true, even if it, I, I know, I, seriously, I don't know how people can sometimes look at their kids and be like, I'm proud anyway. Oh, you must not know what you don't know. Well, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be the other one, right? You're all just wonderful and spectacular just the way we are. How come we can, how come we're not supposed to say that about people, but yet we can turn it outside of school and say, the world is so messed up. Well, who made the world? The very people who we are supposed to say are wonderful and spectacular just the way that they are. Well, no, we're not wonderful and spectacular just the way that we are. And we know that intuitively. It's not even, I mean, nobody is what, what they possibly could be. The question is gonna be how far away from the ideal are you? How, how intensely do you actually pursue the ideal? If you don't know what the ideal is, of course, you, you, you don't know what you don't know. And that's an accidental ignorance. And, and a lot of people do fall into that category. But there are people who, who absolutely intend to stay, to, to stay ignorant as long as possible, and almost as deeply as possible. And then uh, again, these will be the same people who may be out of dullness. You know, they, they don't know that there's something better out there. They can't possibly conceive of what's out there. They don't know what they don't know. And that's all that ignorance is. Ignorance is just not knowing. But again, there's a difference between you don't know and you could know. And then maybe we don't wanna know because that would, shoot, that might actually force us to change the ways in which we live. Or there's, where well, we just simply don't know. We, we, we would want to if we could. But we just simply don't. Okay, so, then, like just being close-minded by accident, or so you could be close-minded by closing your mind yourself, or because that's the only thing that you know about. Yeah, that's what willful and accidental. Yeah, yeah, like <clears throat> like I was saying, I, where I grew up, we had a lot of parties in my neighborhood, but not much that we could genuinely celebrate. Not a lot of graduation. I mean, high school graduation, but I mean, let's face it, the people next door graduate. So, I mean, I don't know how much, how much we put on that. But, I mean, we, we hand out diplomas like, like, like the paper, and that's pretty much what they're worth as well, for the most part, the paper that they're printed on. Because we understand that we bend over backwards to, to just try to force everybody over that line as much as some people try to resist it. And so, you know, we have maybe those, but beyond that, I mean, there's not much to celebrate. And so then, why are we celebrating so much? Well, it's just that willful ignorance. We're trying to forget that we don't have anything to celebrate. And then in my neighborhood, we were really, really envious of the people who lived in other places. And that's, why, and that's how we would explain away our failures. No, oh, because they have these other resources that we don't have. You know, I remember like, for example, um, a few years ago, before we had laptops, they were, there was all this talk about how we had to buy all these laptops, and actually back in those iPads, and it became laptops, because they specifically said the kids in Coronado have laptops. So just as a matter of, of, of equity and a matter of, having to, to compete with them, we had to get them. 
and of course anybody who read anything at all about the literature, <clears throat> sorry, about, about high performing schools, they know because the research was out there. The most expensive schools in the country, the highest performing schools in the country, all the private schools, guess what they do not use? Technology. They don't use laptops, they don't use iPads. They have classes specifically for computers, but they don't, they don't even allow students to have them in the room. Why? Because, well, I mean, I look around the room right now. We don't use laptops at all in this class. Everything is handed out to you on paper. Nothing is online. And yet I'm supposed to believe that people who have their laptops out are working. No, it's just another distraction. But I'm not your dad, probably. And so I'm not going to go around and try to stop you from doing the things that you already know. Yeah. This is also why, what, 80, I think it's like four of you, five of you are passing the class right now? A class where all you have to do is just the stuff I give you. All you have to do is just paperwork, basically. And the topics I allow you to pick your own topics. I couldn't possibly make it any easier. And yet we're playing catch up constantly, maybe. Maybe doing things that distract us, or we're trying to catch up on other classes because we chose to do something else and entirely missing what it is that's going on in another class. What you hear, what you read here, what you encounter could be life changing. Or maybe it's just another class, but the thing is you'll never know. Because you don't know what you don't know. And later on in life, are you ever going to have to use something that you learned from this person? Maybe. Maybe, you'll have to, maybe their idea will be, will be incredibly impactful. But you would never know. Because you don't know what you don't know. And then if I ask you in, in, a, in a few years, <clears throat> what were you doing on the computer that one day? No recollection, probably. <laughs> or... I was trying to catch up on my other homework because I chose to do something else rather than work on this other stuff. But am I ignorant of that? No, it's not my first rodeo, man. About 80% of my 10th graders fail every year. It happens. It doesn't, yeah. I only have like maybe like four or five at the most who pass every, per, per class every semester. Yeah. And then I, and then when, when people ask me, like, well, then why don't you change anything? Like, what? You want me to stand above you? Come on, you can do this. No, you can't. Or you can, depending on what your attitude towards it is. If you think you can, 100% you can. If you think you can't, 100% you can't. I don't care. Well, then you can't. But that's, I don't hold it against you. But it's funny, people will hold it against me. That's because he... He lets us. <laughs> okay. I'm not, again, I'm not your parent. I'm not your dad. I know. Think about it from my perspective. What does that mean I get? It means I don't have to grade much stuff. I really wish people did well, especially in 10th grade, because this is something that's going to cut you off from going to college someday. And then you won't know what you don't know. Then you won't have the opportunities that you could have had otherwise. And then those would be oftentimes the same people who will angrily turn to Coronado and La Jolla and say, it's because they have more than we do. That's why my life is shit. No, your life is shit because you don't live the way that they live. You don't pursue the same things that they pursue. Education to most people is not really, is not real. It's a piece of paper. Can you, you know, in other words, I have, I have this piece of paper, this little piece of cheese. Now with this piece of cheese, I can go get a job which will give me little green pieces of cheese, which are just digital now anyway. And then maybe if I work, you know, I, I can go and get like a, uh, another piece of cheese from another certificate program or maybe I can go somewhere like, like San Diego State to get another piece of cheese. And then we're gonna do badly there and we'll wonder why. Oh, it's because they didn't prepare me in school. Okay. And you can live your whole life that way, completely willfully ignorant or accidentally ignorant, however it turns out. The funny thing is that after today, nobody can be this. After today, it's only possible to be this, which is fine, man. I, I got that you anyway. You remember this, but it's not because I have to. I have to live your life, though, man. It's not because, and I'm not going to be your children. I don't. I'm not going to have to live the life that you bring me into. I'm certainly not going to be the person who has to complain about it. And again, I don't. I hope you guys understand me by now. That we're far enough along in the in the year to know. I'm not telling you this out of anger or hatred, man. I love you guys, and I want the absolute hundred percent best out of you guys. I do. Nothing would make me happier than to, I don't know, like be on an airplane in, in 20 years and come across you and you'd be like, like, oh, where are you flying? And you're like, oh, I'm just 
quality control. What do you mean? Oh, I own this airline. <laughs> That'd be pretty dope. You know? or, or anything else, if, if, I, if I come across you and ask you what you're doing and you tell me that you're living some great dream that you, that you had. That'd be awesome. You know? Too often we get angry about, about those things. But no, man. Because it's, it's, it's a life. It's, it's not just an ideology, man. It's a life. And it matters. Yeah. Because we usually just follow this set of rules that we don't want to make space for other people. Hmm. You let her get away with that. So I mean that that's an example there of like when we see the the founding of, of certain religions. You know, why are they why they preach some of the things they do? They don't know what they don't know, or they didn't know what they didn't know. You know, a lot of times religion is a way of trying to, to grapple with the world to understand it, you know, either psychologically or through metaphor, or actually generally through metaphor, but psychologically or, or physically. If you're living in a, this is why we don't give enough credit to religions generally, just for like how deep they are and what they truly can, can represent. Even if it's a religion that you think is false, it's, it's fine. But think about, my goodness, what is it that you, like, if, if you're somebody and you, and you know nothing, and you're trying to, con well, I'm sorry, you know very little, sorry, about the physical world, about why things are the way that they are, think about how you would try to construct an, a, a meaning and an understanding. Imagine you look up at the sun, and you have no idea what this thing is. How, how can you possibly start to reason about what it is? All you can do is, you know, you can maybe, maybe you make a fire, and you realize, hmm, this is hot, and that is hot, I wonder if these are of the same essence or the same substance. And then you start to see that, you know, even just a light beam itself is kind of hot, is warm. And now you start to, to make these connections. But to make those connections is not supernatural, man. I mean, sorry, two words, not supernatural, but supernatural. It's not very natural. It takes a lot of brain power to make those kinds of connections. I mean, think about why, why how, how does it possibly make sense that there's a thing called an afterlife? If you can get, you know, because you, pretty much we can only reason about things that we've experienced before. It takes a lot of brain power to imagine a, a world that exists after you die because we've never experienced a world after we die or even before we were alive. So the, the, the fact that someone can come along and, and, and develop an idea of an afterlife is an incredibly deep idea. And that's one of those things that can, can be motivating because it can tell you what it is that humans are capable of coming up with, what humans are capable of imagining. And if you can come up with things like that, think about what kind of problems you can solve in your life. You know, because I mean, we're not any, any, any dumber or smarter than the people who came before us. And if they came up with incredible ideas, that means we can too. If we want to. It's a lot of work though, man. And, and it, it, it does take giving up other things in life. You know, I think about like, like all the parties, like I said, in my neighborhood. It takes hours to put those things together. It takes a lot of time to, to go buy all the, all, the, all the alcohol they would drink. I mean, it takes a lot of time to, to work, to get the money to buy the alcohol that they would drink. And I remember one time thinking, I was like, whatever I was, like 13 years old, 12 years old, and I was thinking, that's funny. People talk, because my, my mom would use the expressions sometimes, like, you're pissing your money away. Because I was like 12, I got my first job. When I was 12 years old, I went and got a candy bar. And, well, a whole bunch of candy bars, actually. I got paid the first time, and I came home, and I had like, this big bag of candy bars. I was all proud of it, because, you know, 12 years old, getting, you know, 50 bucks is like getting a million. And I was just like, look, I have like a whole bag of candy. And so my mom would, would, would you know, talk to me about, about money, and about how to manage it, and all that. Which was funny, because we were poor. <laughs> my dad worked at McDonald's. My mom was, my mom was disabled. And yet, somehow, they raised two children, and, in Los Angeles with, this, with a, a McDonald's worker's salary. They knew a little bit about how to, about how to manage money. Yeah. And a lot of times that's what happens. You're just, we're just not in circumstances where we could know stuff. And sometimes we could know stuff. And we choose not to. And even then, by the way, this is not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I, I, don't know, I hear from teachers sometimes, I just, it, it, uh, it's, like, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. We'll be in faculty, or we'll, sorry, we'll be in department meetings, and I'll have a, I'll have a teacher who, one, one thing here particularly, who at our last meeting was complaining, she says, oh my, all my kids care about is anime. So I shouldn't do an impression of this person. Um, this person was just saying, all my students care about is anime, and she was just like, shit-talking anime. 
Yeah. How many of you guys like anime? Out of curiosity. One, one honest person. A whole bunch of you guys like anime. You like anime? Yeah. No. Me? No. But I, but I learn about it. Why? Because what's my job? To talk to people who like anime. <laughs> and so I could, I could be willfully ignorant and go, I'm not going to bother learning about anime. Well, I guess that depends on how much, how much, I, how much, how good of a job I want to do teaching people who like anime. It's like they complain about the music that, that, that people listen to. I mean, nothing, nothing shouts like it's time to die and get in the box more, like, uh, more than I just hate the music today. Not like when I made music. No, it's not like when we used to listen to music. No, the music today, is it good or bad? Probably just as good or bad as it ever was. Depends on how you approach it. it may not be your taste, but shoot, you should learn about it. Why? Because that's what's dictating the, the, the pace of the culture. And if you don't know anything about your audience, how can you possibly sell them anything? If you don't know anything about your students, how can you possibly teach them anything? You have to know those things, otherwise you just make this incredible divide. And there's, you know, there's, there's willful ignorance there. It's funny to me that people will complain about how willfully ignorant their students are, and yet they remain willfully ignorant of student culture. Mm. How good of a life do you want to have? How good of a job do you want to have? How good of, what, how good of a parent do you want to be? Now, the more you can know, you're never going to lose an opportunity in life because you know too much. The only opportunity in life that you're going to lose because you know too much is a bad opportunity. You're going to know, I shouldn't get into this. Why? It's a bad opportunity. If you don't know anything better than, say for example, um, I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, I was, I'll be calling you a lot of former students with that one. Yeah. Can you say it? Can you say it? What's that? Can you say it? Okay. Good, good, good. And this first questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques. Nito, happy Friday. All that sign off.